Welcome back to the channel guys. We got a few parts in that we're gonna try to get installed this weekend. Let's take a look. So we got in the bulkhead connector for our 8AN fuel return line from the engine. That's the stainless braided line that I have. Uh, we'll go ahead and drill the hole on this side over here. That way it doesn't return back into the box that we're sucking the fuel out of. We'll go ahead and drill the hole there, get that mounted up and put a 90 degree on the hose. And then we'll go ahead and connect that up as well for whichever length that we want to make this. We got to kind of run the line probably along the frame rail on this side here. We also got in our trans cooler and our fan here. We are going to try to remote mount this up behind the back differential. Let me show you where I'm talking. On the back side of the frame here, we have this little back plate area behind the rear differential there. I'm going to try to make a mount to where that trans cooler will fit up in there. I plan on hooking up the fan so that it sucks the air through the cooler and we'll mount the lines up and it'll run back to the transmission. I have already installed these adapters. They screw into where the old transmission cooler lines went into the Allison transmission. Uh, these allow it to adapt to a 10AN fittings uh, so I can do a braided 10AN line back to that cooler. The cooler is a 10AN fitting as well, so that works out great. These are from KB Diesel Performance, if anybody is interested. I am not sponsored by them, by the way. They were just ones that I found that were not too expensive. I also just got in the engine fan that I ordered off of Rock Auto. Uh, the description on it said that it was an 18 inch diameter fan, which is what I need for this, and it's for the right engine. However, I already measured and it's 21 inches in diameter and it will not fit our application. And the downside about Rock Auto as well, you can't really give them a call to check the sizes of these. So whenever something says 18 inches, I would have expected it to be 18 inches, but it's not. So we'll have to go through the return process on that and keep looking for a different fan.
So I went ahead and made some aluminum mounting brackets and cut some pieces of rubber as well, just to be kind of some isolators from any vibrations that happen between the frame and the cooler here. That also set the cooler off the frame a little bit as well. I believe my next step is going to be to go ahead and mount the fan to the cooler. And then I'll go ahead and mount the brackets to the cooler as well and hold it up to that back frame and go ahead and start drilling the holes for that. So we got the fan attached to the cooler and the little mounting tabs attached as well. Next we'll go ahead and hold that up against that back brace part and go ahead and mark our holes so we can drill those. We'll then go ahead and mount this up to the back portion there and start making our cooler lines from our transmission. So in between working on the trans cooler, I went ahead and took the fuel tank straps and painted them. These are the ones that we extended by three inches for that body lift. I don't need these quite yet, but this way they are ready whenever I do need them. finally got the trans cooler mounted up to the back now. Before I connect this fully, I will need to fill this cooler up with ATF and then possibly even the hoses with ATF before I connect it to the transmission. I want to minimize as much air in those lines as I can while I connect it to the transmission. So it's getting a little late in the evening. I have to run to the hardware store to get a few things, but I'm gonna hop back on this tomorrow. This evening I'm going to also spend a little time trying to hunt down another fan to try. Hopefully I can find something that's in the 18 inch range that I need it to be. It's just a little hard trying to find a reverse rotation fan that's 18 inches that'll fit this size fan clutch. But we're going to do some research and hopefully I can find one. If not, I may end up just having to go with a fan shroud and a couple of electric fans. Uh, it wouldn't be my first option because I don't think it's going to move enough air. It might move enough, but it's not as much as this mechanical fan would. So that is my plan B on there, but hopefully we can find one. And now today I'm going to work on getting the transmission line kind of ran where I want it. I don't believe I have enough of this 10 AN line to get both ran right now. I do have another 10 foot of this PTFE 10 AN hose that I am going to be getting in sometime this week. And so I'll probably end up just running it in the same location as the one that we're gonna work on today. But I wanna get one fully built today so I can kind of mock up the other one similar and just basically run it in the same location as the other one side by side. The new one actually will be a different color basically cause it ended up having a nylon braiding around it. I couldn't find any just stainless steel braided. It is still stainless steel braided, but it does have the nylon braid around it. And that's the only type I could find that wasn't in a like full kit for a 10 AN with the fittings and everything. Cause I don't really need the fittings. I have enough 10 AN fittings to work for what I need. Well, let's get to it. Now when cutting these stainless steel braided hoses like this, a lot of people say to use electrical tape and wrap around there pretty tight. I find using masking tape actually works a little bit better. I use a cutoff wheel on these and whenever you cut these with a cutoff wheel and electrical tape, the electrical tape seems to heat up and just expand and doesn't hold the braid as well. So I found out that using just regular masking tape and putting it on there and cutting it with that really holds those braids in there really well. So first you're going to want to slide this over the whole thing. And then we'll go ahead and take the tape off of the hose. And then this will go between the outside braided hose and the inner hose. 
that then will push up onto the fitting here and then you'll slide this all the way up along the hose and then start tightening it and that'll lock everything in place. So I got one side done here. I'm going to temporarily mount this to the trans cooler so I can run the line and see what length I need so I can cut that to the length and go ahead and put the fitting on the other side as well. Alright, well we got that line ran relatively where we would like it. I am thinking that it will run along that frame rail there just fine without getting in the way of anything else. I will get a few tie downs and basically bolt them to these tie down locations here and just kind of utilize what's there already. I also have this style clamp here that allows me to run two AN lines next to each other and just kind of helps space them out and hold them in place. I'll use this for the return line as well whenever I get that in. That way it just kind of cleans everything up and keeps everything organized. So after doing some research, I was able to find a more universal aftermarket shifter for the Allison 1000 transmission that we have here. Uh, this is a Sidewinder shifter from Winters Performance. This is of course not mounted up right here. I'm just showing y'all what it looks like. It is made to where using the hardware provided here, it will just bolt up directly to the transmission and shift. This is what the internals of the shifter look like. It is a cable shifter. So I'm going to take the hardware that's provided to go ahead and hook that up to the transmission itself and hook the cable up to it as well. I am not going to mount the shifter yet because I'm gonna to have to figure out how I really wanna mount this in the Humvee. I would like to be able to mount it to where the center console area comes up to the actual shifter. However, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that or if I'm going to have to mount it to where this comes up that high. So whenever I get around to working on the body more and getting it back on the frame, I will show more on how I mounted this into the body. So now I'm going to take the hardware provided in the kit and go ahead and hook this up to the transmission along with the cable just to have it ready for whenever the body does come back on. So that is about as far as we got on that hardware. The little bracket that's supposed to go on the back back here and bolt in just drops down and hits this transmission cross member. So I think my best option on the cable is going to be to actually just mount it directly to the cross member here. Uh, it's not ideal, but I believe it'll do on the angle and everything that it needs to be. That is about where it was supposed to line up with the bracket that was supposed to install on the back. So I am hoping that'll just bolt up there and still work just fine. Well, I have pretty much ran myself into a stopping point this weekend. It looks like pretty much every area that I could work on, I'm actually waiting on parts. So 
To even get the turbo and everything back in up here, I'm waiting for that turbo drain line. There was a shipping issue and it actually came in late, so I wasn't able to get that done this weekend. With the fuel, I am actually waiting for the 90 degree bins to go ahead and finish up the routing of the lines. So I am waiting for those parts to come in. They'll be in this week. The oil drain for the turbo should be in this week. I am also waiting for the other PTFE hose for the transmission cooler. That should be in this week. I started to mount up the shift cable to the transmission. So this area over here is also going to be where the exhaust is going as well. So I kind of need to work on the exhaust before I can know how that shift cable is going to be able to be mounted. They have some different style shift cable linkages that will go on the transmission. I may end up having to kind of modify things and run it differently than it was intended to on the kit. But I won't know until I get some of that exhaust built in there and know where that needs to run. So up front here, we actually do have the radiator in, the intercooler in, the fuel cooler, the power steering cooler. We have a lot of stuff in, but we are still waiting on finding an engine fan on here. I may have a direction for the engine fan. I'm going to work on that tomorrow whenever everything is opened back up so I can get a few calls just to make sure it fits because I'm kind of getting tired of ordering fans that aren't working. I'm thinking once these parts come in, hopefully there is not a lot stopping me from getting this pretty much ready to put the body back on. Well guys, I hate hitting those spots in these types of projects where you're just waiting for parts to come in, but it looks like we have hit that spot. Now once we get everything in, I will definitely have a ton of stuff to do and it will definitely take me a few weekends to do it. Also guys, I am not sponsored by any of the companies of the products I'm using on this build, so I will definitely let y'all know if there is good or bad on the products that I am using. I know this week's episode didn't have a whole lot in it, but we did get some good stuff done and we have a lot to go on this. Hopefully no more stopping for parts, but I appreciate y'all watching guys. If y'all like this type of content, please hit that like button. Share if you know somebody that actually would like to watch this type of stuff as well. Hit that subscribe button if you want to watch as new content comes out on this channel. I appreciate y'all watching guys. And as always, I'll see y'all next time.